So uh, it's at uh, one o'clock, so uh, shall we start? Uh, thank you for joining our session, the session for uh, the Trusted Personal Information Management System, uh, TPDMS, uh, shortly. Uh, I'm representing Information Technology Association Japan, Nihon IT Dantai Reme, or IT Rain in short. My name's Special, uh, Director of uh, IT Rain, and the head of uh, it's Personal Data Bank Promotion Committee. I'm moderating this session today. IT Rain is providing a certification for Personal Data Bank. We call it Joho Ginko in Japanese. Joho means information and or data. And Ginko means bank. Uh, we use the uh, word Ginko because bank is a symbol of trust. I'm not sure today if people trust bank or not. However, uh, traditionally, uh, bank is a symbol of trust, uh, especially in Japan. Uh, today, Sakimura-san, he works for TPDMS project and the specialist in this area will have presentation on TPDMS. He will ex explain what is personal data bank and uh, a function of certification uh, and so on. Then, We'll, we'll have uh, comments, opinions, or questions from excellent commentators. Uh, we expect uh, Sako-san, a uh, professor at Waseda University, to make comments on human-centric approach and uh, information bank. And we expect uh, Christian-san from OECD, uh, information economist, uh, policy analyst, uh, directed for uh, science, uh, technology, and innovation, uh, digital economy policy in, at, at OECD to make a comment on enhanced data access and trusted data uh, intermediaries. And then, uh, if we have time, I would like to ask participants in the hall questions or comments. So, uh, firstly, Sakimura-san, please short, uh, start your presentation with a brief introduction of yourself. Thank you very much for the in introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, or oh, and good morning, good evening, uh, elsewhere uh, for the online people. Um, I'm Nat Sakimura, and I'm going to take uh, like 20, 25 minutes uh, to explain what this TPDMS, Information Trust Bank, or Personal Data Trust Bank, means, and uh, what kind of scheme we are running in Japan. Hopefully, uh, it's going to be informative for you guys, and uh, we would probably have a good discussion about those as well. So, um, data free flow with trust. Do any of you guys have heard of this word, DFFT? Like half. Yes, so it was uh, one of the key words uh, mentioned in G20 Osaka Leaders Declaration back in 2019. Um, it was the clause 11. I'll just read it out. Cross-border flow of data, information, ideas, and knowledge generates higher productivity, greater innovation, and improved sustainable development while raising challenges related to privacy data protection, IPR, and security. By continuing to address these challenges, we can further facilitate data free flow and strengthen consumer and business trust. Can I skip? And such data free flow with trust will harness the opportunities of the digital economy. And what we call as uh, Personal Data Trust Bank, or Joho Ginko, uh, we believe is one of the uh, very useful facility to enable this DFFT. So today, uh, there are three sections uh, in, in this session. Uh, first, I'll talk about information bank, quote unquote, that's Joho Ginko. And then uh, I'm going to explain about certification of information bank. Uh, done by IT Renme. And then we will get into the discussion. Now, about the information bank. Um, a lot of data 
right now is unlocked in the corporate context in the CRMs, customer relationship management. Do you guys know CRM, the world CRM, customer relationship management? Not so much, right? Um, customer relationship management is a scheme that the, the corporations, enterprises, capture the personal data of ours and use that to, cut, um, to contact us or market towards us, you know, sending the emails and things like that uh, to enable pseudo one-to-one -one marketing. That's called CRM. So that's customer relationship management. And what's on the right-hand side with in orange is VRM, vendors relationship management. This is the flip of that. Um, it's one of the concept which was proposed by um, Doc Sals, uh, who is in the Harvard um, Barkman Center, that instead of corporations making guests work on to what we want, we as an individual should express what we would like to get, uh, what kind of things we want to get. So instead of, uh, you know, just being receptive, we transmit our information at our will to express our desires. That's VRM, uh, and that's very, very uh, person-centric. But at the same time, it, uh, the individuals, the users, has to bear its consequences as well. So the responsibility lies, a, you know, a lot of responsibility lies into the individuals. And for many people, that's a little bit too much, we felt. And um, in Japan, we were seeking a third way, which would enable um, individuals, but don't put too much responsibility onto them. So in a sense, the consumer protection consider, uh, considered into VRM kind of things. And that's uh, how we came up with this idea of trusted uh, personal data management system or information bank. Here, the, the on your left-hand side, personal data is captured in company A, B, C, and they are stored there. They are the data holders. And um, we, the individuals, are at the center. But instead of uh, controlling um, those data sources directly, um, there will be a data intermediary called the Personal Data Trust Bank, into which uh, we entrust our data. So the personal data trust bank can draw data from the data sources and store in the personal data trust bank and um, can provide those data for the use by company X, Y, Z on the right hand side um, according to our wishes. We don't have to um, manage the relationship directly, um, but it, it's a trust relationship between the data intermediary and individuals. And data intermediary or the personal data trust bank is going to make sure that the data is going to be kept safe, uh, used ethically, and for the purpose, and is, the user is protected. So that's the main concept. The, the legal structure on the scheme is soft law or co-regulation based. It's a uh, public-private initiative. The, the, the main, there are two you know, legal factors in this, the number one and the number two in this slide. Number one is basic acts on advancement of utilizing public and private sector data, which was enacted in 2016, it promotes appropriate utilization of personal data by multi-stakeholder under participation of individuals. So that's one of the basic uh, legal premises. And number two, 
an interim report by working group uh, for data utilization in artificial intelligence and IoT era. Um, that's from National ICT Strategy Office of Cabinet Secretariat and came out in February 2017. And it says, Personal Data Trust Bank as effective framework to promote personal data utilization and the participation of individuals. With those in mind, um, the, the, the regulators and the, the private sectors are working together to form this um, co-regulation scheme. On the left-hand side, it's the uh, regulator side, the, there's an interim report by ICC and MIC, Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications, um, on the voluntary certification scheme by private body to uh, socially acknowledge qualified personal data trust bank. Um, this is necessary because individuals won't be able to find out whether the company is actually safeguarding our data or using our data ethically. So this kind of um, certification scheme was conceived. And in response, uh, IT RMA uh, made a, uh, the, the policy recommendation for TPDMS certification at working group of the ICC in April two th 2017. And in that, we proposed the mandatory data ethics board and uh, clear privacy notice as binding standard contracts and other requirements for operators. Also, um, with the interim report, the MIC and METI uh, created guidelines on certification of personal data trust bank version one back in 2018 and it set out qualification, uh, model terms of con uh, conditions and governance for in individuals' controllability and trust. And based on that, ITRN created guidebook version 1.0 for TPDMS certification application. And based on the guideline, we started TPDMS certification program for safe and secure services and operators. So, um, to sum up, Personal Data Trust, service, Trust Bank is a service to utilize systems, including PDS, and manage personal data based on entrustment agreement on the data utilization with the individuals, and a service to provide such data on behalf of the individuals to third parties in accordance with the instruction of the individuals or pre-specified conditions and a service to judge the appropriateness of the processing of the data. Now this is, uh, it's in a small font, I'm not sure if you can read it, but um, it's a summary of the guideline version one on the certification of personal data trust bank. Uh, the certification service sets the criteria for individuals to choose safe and secure personal data trust bank. And um, the voluntary, uh, voluntary certification focuses on the flow of personal data and the individual's participation and securing reliability and trust from individuals. And so it's, com it's a combination of certification criteria and model terms and conditions and governance structures. Certification criteria um, encompasses management system, information security, specification of collection method and the purpose and utilization, utilize, utilization of personal data, uh, functions for individual controllability such as uh, user interface. So we make uh, required user interface um, components and governance systems such as data ethics board organized by multi-stakeholders is also there as a requirement. And uh, liability for damages against individuals has been borne by those 
personal data trust bank. We also set out model terms and conditions. We provide concrete conditions for contractual agreement for entrustment, such as scope of operations, effective consent under the act of the protection of personal data, uh, uh, sorry, personal information for providing personal data to third parties and other obligations. So uh, it's not free for the co organizations who subscribe to this information bank scheme um, to you know, set their own term, but the terms and conditions actually has to include all those uh, terms which is included in the model terms. And the governance uh, aspect covers eligibility of a certification body and the method of examination, measures for breach of certification criteria, contractual agreement with the certified personal data bank, and the governance systems of certification body. And those um, corporations or organizations who got the certification will be granted the TPDMS mark. TPDMS mark could show to the individuals that the organization is safe keeping the you know, personal data that as a personal data trust bank and uh, international standards for privacy protection and information security such as 291, ISO 29100 and 2701 is being followed. And TPDMS stands for, uh, uh, formally stands for Trusted Personal Data Management System, but uh, we use a catchphrase as a third way for personal data ecosystem, participation of individuals, data free flow with trust, multi-stakeholder governance, and soft law as well. All right, now let's get to the second point, the certification as an information bank by uh, IT Renme. IT Renme, or Information Technology Federation of Japan, was established in July 2016. The president is uh, Mr. Kawabe Kentaro, who is a representative director of uh, Yahoo Foundation. And one of the largest federation, it's, you know, IT Renme is one of the largest federation of IT industry in Japan. Over 60 associations, and around 5,000 companies and around 4 million employees are covered. IT Renme is association of association, so the companies are actually not, uh, di not directly members of the IT Renme. Um, in the uh, current landscape, of data flow. The data flows from uh, the data sources to data destination without much clarity. In this picture, I have put the black box into it, but you know, we really don't have too much visibilities onto what is happening on our data uh, within the flow. And uh, even if there's not black box data intermediaries, um, Information asymmetry abounds, and not enough trust was formed for data to freely flow per DFFT. That is, you know, individuals may wonder, is my data treated fairly, and um, is, are they not misused, right? And then from the data s uh, source, they cannot know if receivers are good or not. And from the data receiver's point of, point, point of view, um, they cannot know if the data has been given lawfully or not. We need to improve the transparency, accountability, and participation and control to cope with this situation. And TPDMS, uh, also known as Personal Data Trust Bank, it's a mechanism that reduces disinformation asymmetry. 
So it will um, provide transparency, accountability, participation, and control so that you know, individuals will say, okay, transparency is good and it, our control locks. And the, from the point of view of the, the other providers, they now know that the their receiver follows good practice and from the their receiver's point of view, you know, they can say that we can now use the data as it was collected and released legitimately. And to achieve that, um, we have created a new trust service, a TPDMS certification scheme. A new trust service, Trusted Personal Data Management Services, also known as Personal Data Trust Banks or Information Banks, acts as hubs, hubs to provide standardized contractual relationships. So it improves transparency, ensures user participation and control, greatly reduces number of contracts, enforces legal entity KYC, ensures the use of data will be ethical, and enforces that data recipient follows good practice or standards for privacy and security, and provides assurance to individuals. And the TPDMS certification scheme ensures that handling of data at personal data trust banks are following standards and ethical, and proper oversight of its proceed processing as well as that of the source and the destination of data is implemented. There are many requirements, but to cite a few, the service has to provide easy to operate user interface for controlling the data processing and controllability such as traceability, like uh, viewing history of provision of data to third parties, and ability to suspend third party provision, or we also call it as withdrawal of consent, and request for disclosure of personal data passed to Article 28 of APPI is there. And uh, the mechanism to achieve that is provided by Personal Data Bank. That's going to realize the, uh, you know, using the use easy to user interface. So during the certification scheme, we check the user interface as well, so that uh, you know, even from the consumer point of view, it's deemed to be easy to be used. Um, TPA DMS certification is um, uh, there's another uh, example that I want to uh, cite. That's Data Ethics Board. It oversees the activities of the Personal Data Trust Bank and makes sure that all the processing of data is in, acco in accordance to ethics. Um, I mean ethical standards. We also have a relationship with ISO standards. Current certification scheme is based on security management and privacy uh, enhancement standards. And for the security management, we are looking at ISO IEC 27001 and 27002, commonly known as ISMS. And for the privacy enhancement, uh, we are basing on ISO IC 29100 privacy framework, uh, 29134 privacy impact assessment guideline, 29184 online privacy notice and consent, and 27701 extension to ISO IC 2701 and 2702 for privacy information management. Um, it was Good if they could cover everything that we wanted to do, but um, it actually didn't. So on top of that, we also put some additional requirements and controls. 
And that's how we are operating uh, TPD in the application scheme. All right, so that's um, general description of uh, TPD EMS. And perhaps we can get into the discussion on that. Uh, so th uh, thank you, Sekuma san. So, uh, although, uh, as you understand, TPDMS scheme is a little bit complicated. We much appreciate if Sakimura-san's uh, explanation will be helpful uh, or useful to understand the TPDM <coughs> TPDMS to everyone here. So, uh, Sako-san, uh, could you make comments regarding personal data bank uh, structure and the certification system, especially from human-centric approach point of view, and if any, uh, please give us uh, other questions or comments from a uh, various point of view. Uh, before your uh, comments, please uh, introduce yourself briefly. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Kazubi Sakawa. I'm uh, teaching at Waseda University, and I'm a, I'm a researcher in security and privacy. And, well, as a consumer, I would be very interested in this activity because nowadays, all the data, uh, oh sorry, all the shops or all the pe places where I do consume services, they all have my data digitally. But what I have is only paper receipt, right? So I only have paper receipts, and this was what I was doing this morning. So I have to type in again, looking at the paper receipts, and do my own uh, personal housekeeping books, right? But in reality, there are already data about me in all these companies' database. So how can I not use them? And that will be very convenient for me to do housekeeping and also to have these data empower myself. How can I leverage my everyday life if I know more data about me? So therefore, I really expect information bank to gather all the information about me that I might not know, and so that I can use it for myself. And I would be also interested in know knowing which company is interested in my data, because I don't know them. And currently, I think, all these data are exchanged in places where I don't know. So having this information back, uh, that would give me more transparency in seeing who is interested in my data. Having said that, this activity has been in, in Japan for more than five years, and it's, I'm not using any information bank so far. What is the reason, and so this is going to be my question, what is the reason it's not there yet? And what would be our next step forward to make this really happen? So, um, it's a very good question, and uh, there are several reasons for that, I think, but the, one of the main reasons is that uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of data available for uh, entrusting to the personal data bank, right? Um, in Japan, unfortunately, we don't have mandatory data portability. Uh, we can, in principle, as of April last year, access the data, but it's, you know, if you try that, it's really hard. And um, the data you are going to get is likely to be PDFs, which is not really usable. So um, it's not useful in this context. So um, unless that kind of thing is uh, solved, it might be uh, difficult to get it flying. Well, that's my take. Uh, Sakamura-san, uh, as you explained, uh, uh, there is a 
uh, kind of a guideline uh, with respect to the TPDMS. Uh, from your point of view, the guideline should be uh, is unsuitable for uh, the Japanese industry or not? Which guideline? I mean, uh, the guideline yeah, just for the uh, Joho Ginkgo. Just, uh, so, in, uh, again, I guess we need. Well, th this is just my personal opinion, but I guess we need a little bit more incentive or sticks uh, for uh, the corporations to actually adhere to the good practices. Thank you. So uh, then, uh, Christian, uh, could you please introduce yourself and make a comment, uh, especially from an enhanced data access and trusted data intermediary point of view. In addition, if you could explain uh, OECD's project or plan regarding TDI. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And also, um, thank you very much for, for inviting me and giving me uh, the opportunity to talk to you, um, linking the OECD work um, with um, the discussion happening here on information banks. Uh, so my name is Christian Reimsbach. I've been working for the OECD now for 15 years, um, a little bit more than 10 years on data governance issues, where we have explored basically the role of um, different kind of mechanism from legal to technical to organizational mechanisms to facilitate data sharing. Um, and maybe one point, a little caveat, that what I'm basically now about to say and comment on is not the official view of the OECD, but essentially my, my point of view as an expert who having worked, um, as I said, more than 10 years on data issues. Um, the very first point that I wanted to make um, is in terms of information banks is that I, I wanted essentially to congratulate you, congratulate Japan for basically taking leadership in this area. Um, because um, having looked at the, the um, TDI standing for Trusted Data Intermediaries, you will note that um, um, the concept of, 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 of information banks is actually something relatively um, new compared to um, when looking at what is happening around the world. I mean, essentially, the discussion on, on, on information banks started already in uh, 2010, right? Um, and uh, by that time, um, there weren't really a lot of countries talking about um, similar things. Nowadays, we have other concepts that are comparable. Um, for instance, some of you may have he heard about data trusts, may have heard about personal information management systems, uh, may have heard about data stores, and so on. So there are many similar concepts that have now emerged that are similar. Um, now, some of you may argue that what about data brokers, because that concept has been a long time out. Um, but there isn't fundamental, obviously, a fundamental difference between a data broker and information um, uh, bank, which is essentially that the information bank is still acting uh, on behalf or in the interest of the data subject, right? Uh, which is not necessarily the case of a data broker who is essentially controlling and commercializing the data for its own benefit. Um, and that's an important, uh, an important difference. Now, another point where I also would like to congratulate you um, uh, is the, the concept of certification. Um, because and a lot of our work has shown that when it comes to those kind of, um, let's say, actors and institution, as a consumer in particular, you face a problem that you don't necessarily know who to trust. Because if you look at the market, there may be a lot of um, personal uh, information banks, and then the question, can I trust my data? And it's very obviously difficult for a consumer to do the assessment of the quality of of such an institution, which is why we definitely, um, um, definitely looking at this, welcome this kind of approach. And the government also stepping in and providing the certification. And when you know the government has certified something, you, you basically you can trust it. So that's definitely a good, a good thing. Now, um, I would like now maybe to, 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 to point to some, I wouldn't say criticism, but let's say questions that I have. Um, knowing also or noting that I don't obviously have um, know a lot about information bank. We are essentially now studying this in, in depth in our work. And the very first one is indeed um, what Nat San, you, you mentioned on, on the, right, the question about data portability. Um, a lot of interesting in, in initiatives are happening in other countries, like for instance, some of you know the um, Article 20 of the EU GDPR that gives you a right to data portability. So in the EU, every citizen has a right um, to, to have his data be ported 
uh, transferred in machine-readable format, so it doesn't refer necessarily to PDF, which is maybe digital, but it's not necessarily machine-readable in that sense. Um, and this is one of the points that we have observed when you, look in, when you look in particular at the EU, is that the problem there is that citizens have a right to data portability, but it's also not picking up, really. Um, and one thing that the European Commission, among others, are considering is indeed to look into how should we maybe have um, the intermediary step in. So some of you are maybe familiar that there is now in the EU a Data Governance Act. And in the Data Governance Act, there is actually um, uh, provisions that refer to intermediaries, to data intermediaries. So there seems to be the recognition that you, um, data, a data portability right is not enough. You need to have something that makes it actually practical, operational. Um, and maybe this is indeed something that is eventually missing here, uh, where you have the, the information bank, but you don't necessarily have a data portability right that gives people a kind of a, a, um, a mechanism to really ask, a right to basically ask the data to be transferred to a third party so it can be reused. Maybe a, a few for, um, other questions that I have um, is the question about to what extent um, do you are uh, also companies, um, potential clients of the information banks. Because I'm, I'm referring also f to this, um, thinking about data portability in Australia. There is in Australia, as some of you know, there is a consumer data right. And what is interesting about that from a data portability perspective, which is essentially a data portability regime, is that this right is a right that is not only granted to individuals, but also to small and medium-sized enterprises. So some small enterprises have a right to data portability. And so the question is, is it also something possible here in Japan where, as a small business, I may also have an interest in having my data that is stored, let's say, in a cloud, and I may, I want to, if I want to transfer my data from one cloud provider to another, that kind of thing may be also useful. So this is also something to, to raise as a question. Another one, and this will be my last one for now, I don't want to talk too much, um, is the, um, the question about how much control do you have as an individual, um, meaning, for instance, there is a concept of data trust that is out there um, and that has raised a lot of interest, in particular in the context of AI, where you see countries like the UK or Canada promoting this as a way to basically enable data sharing um, and make it available for machine learning. And the question um, that is often to be or not really considered is, uh, or an issue eventually, is that um, as a once the data is essentially in the control of the data trust, it is assumed that the trust will always act on behalf of the consumer. There is so no um, granular control mechanism that I have as a, cons as a consumer to say, I don't want to have that data now shared with that. It's basically, it's now, you can revoke your rights and so on, but you don't have granular control. And so my question would be, in, when it comes to the information banks, how much control do I have as a, as, a, as, a, as, a as a data subject? Is it once it's out there that I have to assume that the information bank will act uh, uh, on my behalf, essentially like a data trust? Or is there some kind of a, uh, mechanism where I can control? So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Christian. -san. So uh, uh, Christian -san, uh, say then there are three uh, questions. So the first one, the, the second one, uh, how do you think about uh, data portability and the uh, DDI? I believe data portability is, yes. the, the, is the missing part in our yeah. system. So, so uh, we, we need it. You are thinking that uh, in Japan uh, we should have such system. Yes, I'm really hoping that it's going to be implemented. Uh, how about Sako-san's opinion on that point? This is so data portability? Yes. I, I, will, I really want that because that will be necessary to do my housekeeping <laughs> <laughs> book. I think, thank you very much. So the second point, the, uh, the, the potential clients, the, so the so, Sakimura-san, uh, do you think that uh, uh, we'll be able to get success to get more uh, potential client uh, in our scheme? So that depends on you know how much data we can actually access and utilize. So uh, that must be related deeply related to that data portability, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, and uh, third questions: uh, How much and uh, 
to what extent uh, the individual, individual uh, should have the control uh, using the uh, TPDMS. So TPDMS is actually uh, making it mandatory to have, you know, fairly granular control on uh, what you can do with the data, right? I mean, in the beginning, you are going to set up the general rule, right? But uh, you know, after a while, you may change your mind, right? So you should be able to go into that and tweak the. Uh, how the data is going to be treated. So that's what we are doing. Okay, I have a, a follow-up question because it's indeed very interesting. Um, because one, when I saw the this one of the slides, it actually suggested that um, there is a, um, because all the data is essentially stored at the original data holder, which can be a company, a, a commercial entity, and so on. And um, if I understood, I mean, one thing that I didn't understand is if the if the idea is also to transfer the data from from the data um, holder, original data holder, to the information bank. And I'm asking this question following what you just said because, as you do know, um, there are mechanisms like you know what we refer at the OECD as privacy enhancing technologies, where you can do something like federated learning, where you keep the data essentially there. So I wonder if when you talked about the mechanism, does it include that as well? Um, these kind of mechanisms where you basically don't have to download the data and control it, but you basically have some kind of federated control mechanisms. Potentially, uh, but right now it's uh, old fashioned uh, data download and control kind of control. Do you have any other questions or comments? Right. I, I definitely just wanted to follow up to say that this is, um, I don't know if I mentioned this, because um, I briefly it was mentioned that we are working on, on, um, on trusted data intermediaries, but one of the reasons also why I was very excited to be here is actually to learn about information banks so that we can study this in more detail. So uh, for the people in the room, um, stay tuned. You will see our OECD report basically coming out next year uh, where we'll feature um, also information banks, but also other kind of intermediaries. Thank you very much. So uh, we just have a few minutes, but on, uh, if uh, any, I would like to have any uh, questions or comment and uh, from the, the floor of this hall. So anyone? Uh, ah, so please, uh, yeah, please use uh, that microphone. Thank you. My name is Christopher Wilson. I'm the executive director of My Data Global. Um, I was hoping you could unpack uh, a little bit more of the incentives for data holders to to enable uh, data portability. I think we all agree that's that's kind of a holy grail. No one would argue against that. But there's a whole host of assumptions about what might make it possible. We could talk about uh, the sticks. Uh, and I think even in Europe, where you know we do have uh, the GDPR article, it's largely not actionable. It's it's just too complicated and difficult for users to use. And there have been some important developments, notably the uh, Digital Markets Act now requires data portability uh, in any case of gatekeepers, but it's unclear how that's going to play out. And so it's easy to think that for, for regulation to incentivize that, it might take quite a bit of time, especially in, in countries and regions where, where initial uh, legislation hasn't been started. In regarding, uh, one might also think about the uh, the carrot, the positive case. Uh, what's your feeling on the ability to to make a business case to data holders uh, to enable uh, data portability, either by facilitating it or, or opening up for other services or users to do it? And then, lastly, I, I think it's it's reasonable to assume that. Uh, if we think about the relationship between the number of data holders that provide data portability and the amount of value that provides to users, it will be, it'll be a hockey stick graph, right? If I have just one or two services that I use that are providing me with that, it's really not worth very much. If I have 80% of the services that I use within one sector, then that starts to give value. But it really gives value if almost everything I use is providing that. But if a lot of those are small companies, uh, not affected by legislation like the DMA uh, today, how do we incentivize that? Does that require a kind of culture change across markets? And, and how do we get there in places like Japan? Thanks.
this. So the uh, so yeah, the uh, unfortunately, then, uh, our time uh, is uh, over, and then uh, uh, so uh, it's time to cross. So the, yes. Ah. So we would like to continue the, your question the, uh, outside of the, this room. So uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, attending uh, today the six, uh, session. Uh, we're also happy if our ex experience on TPDMS in Japan will be useful and beneficial to everyone here. Uh, thank you very much.